burning right now. Okay, this is Jay Fidel, Hawaii, the state of clean energy. And we're talking to Sharon Moriwaki and Larry Newman and Zach McNish. And we're talking about uh, solar. Solar. It's the, the competitive industry. The competitive industry and its of solar. On the consumer. The views and opinions consumer. expressed on the following and, program uh, are not necessarily those of the staff and management of yeah. Salem Media of Hawaii. Yeah. Welcome to Think Tech Wednesday on the Think Tech radio series on AM 760 KGU, broadcasting across the islands and raising public awareness in Hawaii. Now here's your host, sound on, Jay Andrew. Fidel. Is the sound on? Okay, this is Jay Fidel, Think Tech, Hawaii, the state of clean energy, and I will, I will explain this. <laughs> I'm here on Wednesday. We're talking about the competitive uh, the solar, solar industry industry with Sharon Moriwaki, who is, by, if you didn't notice, uh, Sharon is the co-chair of the uh, Hawaii Energy Policy Forum, one of the finest organizations, if not the finest organization, <laughs> dealing with clean energy in the state. It's the one responsible for. You know, a lot of the forward motion we have here, and uh, thank you, Sharon. Thank you for doing nice that. Nice to be here, Jay. Okay. Get your microphone on. Okay, just want to be sure. Okay, Larry Newman, you're here from Hawaii, and she would like That's to see right. a smiling face as often as possible. Uh, and uh, Zach McNish. Uh, Zach, I warn you that Larry is good at cross-examination. <laughs> Someday he's going to go to law school. Maybe he, he it has gone to law school. I don't know. I'll, I'll be careful. <laughs> <laughs> That's Zach, Zach McNish. Zach is an attorney, so yeah. we'll have an interesting conversation. T tell us about your <laughs> professional affiliation, Zach, so we know who you are and why you're here. Sure. I'm, uh, I'm with uh, Revolution. Uh, I'm a legal counsel there, and I work on policy issues and, and uh, drafting contracts and sort of general business management with Revolution. I've been there about a year. Uh, prior to that, I was in private practice for a number of years, and I'm, I'm from Maui originally. Okay. Okay, well, so uh, another lawyer. Larry, is this making you feel better or what? I don't know, you? You're you surrounded too? by lawyers. Uh -oh. well, okay. Is that why you feel so secure? I haven't done anything wrong. <laughs> Okay, the first thing is let's do a Hawaii Energy segment and find out about uh, Negawatt Moments. All right, sure. What do you think, Larry? Uh, let's go for it. All right, so uh, Hawaii Energy, we are the uh, ratepayer-funded energy efficiency program for the state, uh, with the exception of Kauai. Uh, and with the hot weather and the summer upon us, I thought I'd share with you a couple of incentives for keeping your house cool without turning the air conditioning on, basically fans. So we offer incentives for three types of fans. Uh, the first one I'd like to mention is a whole house fan. This is a fan that will, uh, when you get home and your house has been buttoned up all day, with a cracking open the windows, turn the whole house fan on, and it will suck all the hot air out of your house. You can lower the temperature in your house 10 or 15 degrees with, within 5 to 10 minutes. And then you can shut it off or put it at a lower setting, and you don't have to blast the air conditioning to try to cool that hot air in your house. You just want to take it away and get it out. Um, we have a $75 rebate for that, and we've got a number of contractors you can find on our website at hawaiienergy.com. Uh, the other one we have is solar attic, solar attic fans. Uh, those are uh, fans that are uh, on your roof. It uh, doesn't require any electricity, it's solar powered, but again, that's to relieve the hot air trapped inside your attic space to try to keep your, uh, your top floor a little bit cooler than it otherwise would be. We've got a $50 rebate for that. Some of our participating solar contractors that install solar hot water uh, do install solar attic fans, so you can get a, a start there on our website again. And finally, we have ceiling fans. A lot of folks have ceiling fans. There are Energy Star ceiling fans and non-Energy Star ceiling fans. So we have a $35 rebate for Energy Star ceiling fans. They use about 20% less uh, electricity than a non-Energy Star um, ceiling fan. And one of the features that help make it an Energy Star ceiling fan is that it uses uh, the appropriate CFL lighting within the fan rather than in incandescent. Mm -hmm. So um, that's it. You can call us toll free uh, anytime, 877-231-8222 from the neighbor islands. Or give us a call here on Oahu at 537-5577. Okay, Larry. That's Larry Newman from Hawaii Energy. Every week something new and special. They stay up in the middle of the night figuring these things out. <laughs> We're going to take a short break. We'll be right back. We're going to talk to Zach McNish more about... Uh, so, 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 so.
solar PV. So, solar PV. Competitive the competitive industry. industry. Sharon, Sharon is the progenitor of all of this. We'll be right back after this break. I'm not here to be sound. your host, Jay Fidel. We're back. We're live. We're here on Wednesday, Hawaii in the State of Clean Energy with uh, Sharon Moriwaki, my co-host, and sponsored by the Hawaiian Electric Company, uh, DBED, that's the Department of Business, Economic Development, and Tourism. We talk about it all the time. And uh, Hawaii Energy, which had Larry Newman here, right here at this table, represents right here in the flesh. Okay, and we have Zach McNish, and he's going to tell us about solar in Hawaii. We're going to talk about the competitive solar industry and, and how it's working out for him, his company, and for the industry in general. Right, Zach? And for Zach? the consumer. And for the consumer. And for the consumer. Sure. Lest we, lest we forget the consumer. Okay. <laughs> all right. So, um, first of all, uh, you know, uh, you mentioned earlier, Zach, that you're a lawyer. We always allow the lawyers on the panel to cross-examine uh, Larry. <laughs> <laughs> So, the tables turn. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I wanted to answer. We, we give Larry an opportunity to cross examine you, too. So be prepared. Do so you have any questions for him? You know, you know, boost him a little. 
No, I, I, you know, at the break you were telling us about that, uh, the whole house van, and, and uh, it sounds really interesting. I haven't heard of that before, but it, it is like relatively it would, new. Would come in handy these uh, hot days we're having. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's a newer technology, so it's quieter. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they've been around for a long time, but the older ones were very loud. You know, kind of a jet engine in your house when you're running. Oh, but no. now they're now they're a lot quieter, and <laughs> yeah, a lot better. Great. And you're going to say how much they cost so that the new days. Well, are it, it, it installed maybe you know fifteen hundred to two thousand. They come in different sizes. Uh, it's best to uh, call an appropriate company that installs these things. They they are sold at Home Depot and Costco. Some higher quality ones are um, by some contractors. Uh, you can find more information on our website, whyenergy.com. And um, they will come in and assess your home and where it should be positioned uh, properly in the home and how it would be installed. And, yeah. Our job is to, you know, proliferate clean and efficient energy everywhere, right? That's, yeah, that's what I get paid to You do. must sleep well. No, there's always more work to do. <laughs> there's always one more, one more deal to have, you know, one more uh, new idea to, to uh, promote. Yep, there's another KWH to save somewhere. Well, you know, lest we forget we're in a transformation, every day counts. You know, it's like building the studio here, right? right. Every day has got to be better than yesterday, every single right. day. That's you right. can't just have one day like the last day. That's not acceptable. It's got to be better. Yeah. Yeah. So don't sleep. <laughs> but let us know what vitamin pills you take. <laughs> in fact, if you're really smart, you'll ask Sharon what kind of vitamin pills she takes. <laughs> I don't know. You're having a lot of programs these days. I think you've I learned it all from you. Okay, can we get serious? <laughs> yes. Of course. I hear from Zach. So, so, so Zach, you know, uh, what did you want to tell the people here today? Well, you know, it's <laughs> a pretty broad topic. <laughs> Talk about so you want to give me that, that much of a brain? <laughs> even know me that way. <laughs> no, I think, uh, you know, if there's any message here or sort of theme of, of what we we're going to talk about today, you know, I think it's, um, it's the, the solar industry in Hawaii is, is increasingly competitive. Um, you know, I've seen, I think, a couple of hundred contractors, uh, you know, are now, are now working in the solar photovoltaic uh, industry in Hawaii, which is a, a pretty high number. And, uh, 300. 300. Yeah, or more. Hey, yeah. I, I heard it's more than 300. That's a lot. Yeah. So is that too many? Um, I, I, you know, I think competition's always a good thing. I wouldn't want to stop anyone who wants well, to start part, business. Pardon me for asking, but is there a point where it gets to be too much? Well, I think we're at a point where, where consumers, probably if you ask them, feel inundated by, uh, by the... By, know, the, by the, ads and door-to-door -door and special benefits and go to Las Vegas and whatnot. Sure. You're not offering go to Las Vegas. No. Anymore. Thank you for that. <laughs> did you read Marco Mangelsdorf's uh, article in Civil Beat a week ago? I did. Yeah. Well, well uh, just for the background so everybody should know, this is an article that, that says that the solar industry is in trouble. Okay. And it, and it shows that the numbers are down for a lot of companies. And what's interesting is that some of the companies that have come here, not local companies from the mainland, are doing better and some of the companies that are local are doing worse. Uh, you know, I mean, I don't know if the data is correct, but he's got tables there, and um, it's an interesting voice, uh, you know, in the mix to hear from him. So, what do you think? Is this article right or wrong from your standpoint? Well, you know, I thought it was a great article in that it really, I think, brings a lot of these issues to the forefront and can start the discussion. You know, it, I think you've sort of brought up two separate issues. One is, you know, what's the overall market doing, and the second part is, what's the distribution of, of companies in the market. Um, you know, in the first question, whether the market is in, I think he called it a free fall. Um, that may be an overstatement, <laughs> but okay. <laughs> I, you know, I would, I would disagree with that. Good. Um, you know, I think the market is strong. Um, you know, and if you look, he's got some interesting graphs in there, and I would encourage people to, to take a look at those. Uh, you know, but what you see actually is a, is a spike from, from in 2012. At the end of 2012, you see a pretty sharp spike, and then you see a, a you know, quote, decline in the beginning of, you know, first quarter and beginning of second quarter of 2013. And why? Well, I think a lot of the spike of 2012 was uh, 2013 business that was pulled into 2012 at the end of the year okay. by the states. Because of the risk of losing the tax credits. Right, and, and in, in particular the way that risk was announced to the public. Um, you know, you had these sort of pre-announcements by, by the Department of Taxation that they were intending to reduce it, and then they did reduce it, and, and so people really, um, for a relatively long period of time in 2012 from, say, August of 2012 through the end of the year, we're really wanting to, to beat the end of the year deadline to get the higher level of state tax incentives. May I say, okay, 
this is not cross-examination, sure. but it is a point <laughs> that I would like to make. As you say people, but the people are getting all their information from those 300 installers. Mm -hmm. The people don't know anything about this. They just know there's a goodie out there, you know, just like they know about your goodies in general, Larry. <laughs> okay. But the, the people get their information from the installers. So if there's a sort of December rush on this, it's mm -hmm. because the installers told them to rush. Absolutely. Don't you think, you know? I, I agree with that, absolutely. But but I do think that as it's a case where the, the installers want the business and the consumers want the tax credit, so those interests are sort of aligned there. Yeah, we've seen a deal. similar dynamic with the solar water <coughs> heating industry. Mm -hmm. So the Hawaii Energy's had the program, uh, you know, inherited the program from the utilities. And there is often a, a rise towards the end of the year. Folks want to minimize the time <coughs> they have to wait for their uh, tax credit. So they do wait to the end of the year. and. And the program has seen in the past, if there, you know, kind of dark clouds on the horizon when it comes to any kind of credit, it does spike a little bit and then it drops afterwards. You, you believe in the credit, Larry? I, I think it definitely helps. Absolutely. What does it help? Uh, it helps lower the, the cost to the consumer. Um, there, there are real savings, and otherwise uh, they may not be able to afford it. I don't, I don't have solar. Sorry. Maybe if I if I had solar. I appreciate that. I know but, you would. <laughs> but I don't have solar, so I get to pay, okay, for this credit. So I'm not all that enthusiastic about it. If I don't have solar, I'm not sharing any benefit, but I'm sharing the burden. Well, you are indirectly benefiting. Right. Oh, this is a good one now. Let's <laughs> let's hear how this works. <laughs> well, you know, from from the efficiency programs, as a society, you are uh, because we are able to reduce our consumption of oil. We are able to avoid investment as into benefit. infrastructure because otherwise you would end up paying if the if if the island had to build more infrastructure, burn more oil, uh, you, you would end up paying. Everyone would be paying a little bit more. So you're saying, and really I'm interested in this answer. So you're saying that the cost of the um, tax benefits, okay, is less than the cost of the oil that I would be paying for, I guess, from generation from Hawaiian Electric. Okay. That I wouldn't be able to answer. But in I terms mean, that's of, the question. I mean, that's there what, are that's three, the three components you make. For, for a solar thermal system, there are three components. Uh, two of those are credit related. And one is the rebate that we offer. So I can, I can clearly say that that rebate offer is making a difference in benefiting society overall. Uh, not everybody that gets a solar thermal system has the, the tax appetite to even benefit from the, the credit. Uh, we don't have any information to know to what degree are they taking advantage of that tax credit. Um, but, you know, it would be on the order of, uh, I think, around three to four grand in total between the state and federal tax credit that might go to uh, offset the cost of a solar thermal system. It raises system. an interesting question. And yeah, maybe in the, in the, in the future, uh, we will know all of this. We will have numbers on all of this. And we'll be able to crunch those numbers and figure out exactly who's paying for what mm -hmm. and, and, and how much it's costing the state, how much it's costing me, how much it's costing the guy who puts it on his roof, and, and whether in a collaborative way, you know, in a, in a sort of crunching all the numbers together way, uh, it should be tuned, mm -hmm. you know, to shift the burden one way or the other, you know. But anyway, um, so uh, how about you? Do you, do you, do you like the tax credit, Zach? I think I know the answer. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do like the tax credit. And why? And, uh, you know, I think in, in, in addition to the, uh, to the other reasons that, that we've talked about, uh, you know, there is, and, and I think there are people who are beginning to look at those numbers. You know, I know Blue Planet did a study last year regarding the, the impact of the tax credit on the, on the sort of uh, economy of Hawaii as a, as a whole. Um, you know, I think DBED has, has looked at those numbers. It would be interesting to get someone from DBED, you know, on your show to, uh, to talk yeah. about that. Their analysis sure, of those numbers. Got it. Um, okay, it's done. You know, but, but, but uh, based on what I've seen from the Blue Planet study and, and, you know, at least what DBED has on their website, it seems to me pretty clear that the tax credit does generate income for the, or it generates uh, economic activity in the state that, that has a benefit on the state. So it may not have a direct impact on you as the taxpayer, but in the sense that you're then going to have to pay less taxes because the state's GET income tax revenues are up, their expenditures on unemployment are down, all of that. Talking about jobs now. <clears throat> yes, jobs. But should we, be, should we be sympathetic to the jobs thing? I mean, if, if I mean, uh, here, suppose I raise the tax credit mm -hmm. by, you know, say a third. 
say 50%, okay? I guarantee you that I would get more installers. Now there'd be 500 installers <laughs> on the block, right? They'd all be installing like crazy, right? right. More jobs. But that, that doesn't, you know, to me, that kind of well, analysis doesn't really work. I, I don't care how many people are actually employed in the area. I just want the whole energy picture to be right. Right. What you were talking about earlier. Right. And, and I don't think that, I don't think that you know, a, a doubling of the tax credit is necessarily the right answer or anything like that. I mean, you, wanna, you want the tax credit to be enough where it, it provides that additional incentive to consumers to purchase solar, right? I mean, the whole purpose of the state tax credit is it's not a jobs, um, it's not for industry, it's not for consumers, right? It's to help what you need, it's exactly. clean energy goals. That was the reason the tax credit yes. was passed. Yes, amen. Nice of you to say that. You want to say it one more time? Sure. The, the reason the tax credit was passed, as I understand it, was to help the state meet its clean energy goals, which are ambitious goals, and you know they're good goals. And, and to the extent that we need to continue to provide an incentive to people to, to help us reach those goals as a state that we've decided on, then you know, we need to continue to provide the incentive at the, at the level that will induce people to, uh, to adopt. You know, you, know, you know what the really big news, though, is the really big news is that more and more we are focusing on PV, more and more. And we are finding a way to do it. And Hawaiian Electric is finding a way to do it. It's finding a way to, uh, you know, with or without the, uh, the, the, the instruction and guidance of the PUC, it's finding a way to do it. And it, technically, technically, you know. So all of a sudden, where there was a, a curtailment's not the right word, but uh, there were you know interconnect studies and resistance, you know, to increase PV on the grid. Now there's less resistance, and they're finding a way. And this means that there's, there's a kind of confirmation of the notion that PV is more in our future than the other alternatives. You know, if you, it's hard to reel the tapes back on this, but we've been doing this for five years, okay? Mm -hmm. At the beginning of the five years, PV was one of many. Mm -hmm. It wasn't necessarily the lead. It was interesting, it was high tech, all that stuff. But there was wind was a big feature. Big wind was a great prospect. Geothermal, big deal, right? Ocean energy and Cynthia Thielen, all that, right? But now, you guys have emerged. And I say to myself, why didn't the I started an installer company. You know? <laughs> it's gangbusters, and for good reason. It's the favorite technology. It's the one that's emerging as our, our lead technology, our salvation, if you will, in, in making the transition actually work. You, know, you must feel good about that. I do feel good about that, and I think that you know, for, for a lot of people who buy solar, I think they feel good about that too, and I think that's one of the reasons why um, solar is being adopted because it allows people on a you know residential homeowners on an individual basis to to be able to participate, um, feel like they're doing the right thing and making a contribution, and, and saving money, and saving money, and also just from a, a sort of uh, you know physics standpoint, uh, it just makes more sense to to the extent you can generate electricity close to where it's being used, mm -hmm. it just makes sense to do that. What about um, storage, you know? I mean, this is sort of inherent to what I was saying before, but we used to think, and to, to a certain degree, we cannot deny that you can't, you can't do solar at night. If anybody here feels you can do solar at night, I, wanted, I want that person to speak up now, Larry. Solar thermal. <laughs> at night. You have hot water all night. Okay. Your hot water tank is a battery. Okay. Touche, <laughs> yeah, touche. He is a lawyer. He's just not saying it. <laughs> You know, but if, if there was any, if there was, you can't do solar at night, and that's a given. And if solar is becoming more and more important to us, what are we going to do? You remember, Sharon, you and I, we had this interview with this young woman on Lanai, high school kid, right? Oh, that's right. And said, uh, you know, you want solar all over Lanai. You don't want wind on Lanai. You know, what are you going to do at night? Uh, you won't even be able to watch <laughs> television. Nothing. And she said, Story. And she said, oh, it's okay. <laughs> We're going to oh, sleep early. early. That's right. <laughs> sure as <laughs> she <I> will. <laughs> sure as <laughs> she will. <laughs> but you know what? What about the nighttime? I mean, what do you what do you propose there? I mean, if solar indeed is going to be, you know, our main thrust here, uh, what are we going to do about the nighttime and storage? You guys working on that? You know, Larry, you and I could go into a little company, <laughs> little transistors about that big, See and it. it would hold a lot of energy. Okay. And we have a thousand, bundle thousands of them together in a little box. 
and, and we could be we could be way ahead of all that asset game. Right? We'll need a good lawyer. We'll need a good lawyer. <laughs> we'll make Bill Gates look like a biker. Yeah. <laughs> Hold that thought. So what do you think, Zach? I think you know storage has been the the bogeyman for a long time, and and there's a tremendous possibility there if if we can develop storage, and uh, hopefully we will. I'm I'm hearing the sound of music. I love the sound of music <laughs> and our theme song especially, and that means we're going to take a short break. Uh, we're here with Sharon Moriwaki, my co-host, uh, Larry Newman from Hawaii Electric, Hawaii Hawaii, Hawaii Energy, Hawaii Energy, <laughs> 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 and Zach McNish, <laughs> a solar man. We'll be right back after this break. Seven sixty. Here we're back, we're live, we're Think Tech, we're in Hawaii, the state of clean energy with Sharon Moriwaki, Larry Newman, Zach McNish, and me, Jay Fidel, and we're talking about the competition in the solar business. So, um, you know, it's, it's competitive for sure. And people are offering trips to Las Vegas, which <laughs> actually makes me nervous, you know, because if, if you're offering a trip to Las Vegas, there's two things happening there. And based on all your education, Larry, you could, you know, you could comment on this. Economically, Num number one is what's happening is very competitive, and so people are really digging deep. And or there's a lot of profit, there's a lot of beef in those prices that they can afford <laughs> that the solar installers can afford to send me to Las Vegas. What do you think? Uh, <laughs> well, for me, it's all about solar thermal. All we got are rebates. That's it. Just a thousand bucks. That's all we can offer our. Our ratepayers, our customers. Okay, no trips, that's, nothing that's, fancy. That's, that's a pretty direct answer, I would say. Yeah. 
<laughs> and we hope we do that. They they consider solar thermal before they consider PV. Yeah, and you don't offer any trips to Las Vegas. We don't. <laughs> I want to be clear about that. We don't. <laughs> you know, after this discussion, no no installer would ever offer a trip to Las Vegas again. <laughs> we have had an uptick of uh, interest with uh, solar contractors participating in the program. Yeah, we fluctuated good. between 60, maybe we peaked at maybe 95 a year ago. But you're talking solar water. But solar hot water, yeah. yeah. Okay, back back to you, Zach. Um, you know, what's your comment about that? I mean, is is is, is the mark? Are the, how are the margins doing? You know, are these companies making a lot of money? Well, I, you know, I can't speak to what other companies are, are doing or not doing. I mean, I think there's definitely, um, you know, it's it's competitive, and, and people want the business, and they're willing to to skate on thin ice. I think to to get people's business. Are you saying the margins are under pressure? I, I think the margins are under pressure. Sure. I mean, there's. It's impossible for that not to happen in a market that's competitive. With, yeah. You know, as you said, 300 people. Uh, it's just, uh, you know, in some ways, it's a it's a flight to the um, to the cheapest price. Yeah. And you know, I think that's you know, from the customer's perspective, on the one hand, that's good because you want your consumers to have the cheapest price available. On the other hand, you know, I think the issue that consumers and homeowners need to address is whether or not the company they choose is going to be there to live behind the warranties. You know, I mean, putting a solar system on your roof is. You know, it's a complex, oh, sure. not complex, like but it's a piece of electrical that. equipment. It's, yeah. you know, holes in your roof. Yeah. Is your company that you're going to be around in, sure. in sure. five years? Yeah. Um, is the, are, the, are, the, are the components that you choose going to be there? You know, there's still a, a pretty broad spectrum of, uh, of panels and inverters that are, you know, made in different places and made in different ways. And, uh, you know, we've had some, some really big companies uh, go under, or, you know, SunTech, a uh, big Chinese company, is in bankruptcy in China. Really? Are they still producing? I think they're still producing panels, but they're uh, you know not uh, not paying off all their bonds and are you know being sued in New York and some action against them in China. So there's a there's a lot going on with them. Uh, but that, you think that's a result of the tariff on their uh, import their their exportation to uh, the U.S.? Yeah, you know I'm not an expert on that. I, I think it ha I think it actually has to do with um, with other countries. Um, uh, other countries not wanting to buy Chinese panels for similar reasons of the U.S. tariff and that putting pressure on the modules that are um, assembled in, in Taiwan are in more demand, so there's simply less, uh, you know, they're less able to move the, the Chinese-made, Chinese manufacturers. It's an international it's, question. It is, it is. <coughs> okay, sorry, I interrupted. Um, this, so there's, so to, which is to say consumers have a lot of choices, but it, it you know, it's sort of, uh, it's, it's great that they have those choices, and it's great they're getting a lower price. On the flip side, I think it's a lot of noise for, for homeowners to sort through, and, and the concern that you know it does matter which contractor you, you pick to install your system. Well, you would say that because you've been around for a long time and you have a quality product. That's why you would say that. Absolutely. We, we appreciate that. But it sounds like to me, I mean, objectively, that in a market where there are 300 entries, uh, or more, and some of them are brand new entries, and some are unknown entries, and some of them send you to Las Vegas entries. Um, I don't know who that is, by the way, but, it's, but I think it's, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't do business with a company that would send me to Las Vegas. You know, um, uh, you got to really be careful who you deal with because some of them are completely unknown, and you really do have to be sure that you've done your homework about the, the quality of the company. But, but that's my question: um, is is that because of the competition at low prices? Are there standards so with installers and you can say, okay, if, even if I went with A or B or C, even with the Las Vegas trip, uh, that I know that there's there's quality that's coming out of that, even if it's a That's good a good price. question, Sharon. Yeah, I think that, you know, one way for homeowners to, to is to try to get an apples to apples comparison, right? And so, you know, to the extent you can look at, at um, the material components of the system, you can evaluate, you know, is this panel, is it going to produce the same as this, the panel being offered by this other company? And those are sort of, I think, quantifiable differences between the, the materials, the, the actual solar panels and the inverters that are being offered by each company. So one company might be offering a panel with a five-year warranty, another company might be offering a panel that comes with a 25-year manufacturer warranty. Mm -hmm. You can sort of evaluate those differences, you can look at the power production of the panels. You want me to do that? Me, me, I don't know anything about this stuff. Well, that's yeah, the, yeah, I think that's the that's the, the price you pay for for if for going you know for trying to get the lowest price, which is a but good thing. There's got to be a better way. I mean, for example, I mean, I recall you would know about this, Larry. I recall that in the solar water business, that's right. Hico would come and look 
right? Well, we, he could well, do we, that now. So some, well, HECO does, right? Hawaii so Energy does. Did Hawaii, oh, that's right. Yeah. You took that function yeah. away from Since them. So you come and say, oh, this is a good installation. You did it right. Right. Isn't that true? So to, to Sharon's point, a uh, participating contractor, it does meet that that grade that of standard? professionalism, that standard. So whether or not you choose contractor A, B, or C, if they're all a participating contractor, you should be confident that your system that's installed is going to conform with the standards and specifications of the program. It's going to be uh, constructed of equipment that is mentioned, you know, explicitly outlined in the standard. Uh, and the qualified people have made the installation. Right. The right. Member Sharon went to the unions, and the unions had all these classes. Mm -hmm in how to install yeah, these things. Unions but yeah. my question then, so and turning then the program it from, will inspect it. Okay, that's valuable, yeah, but I don't know if that exists with, with PV from the PV installer. Well, it, well it, is there a program like that? There, I mean, first of all, the, the county, the city and county inspects, right? We have to get an electrical permit, and that permit has to be closed by an inspector, and HECO also has to ultimately approve the, the installation. So there is a, a, certainly a baseline. Well, but so I'm, looking for, I'm looking for a a way that I can do my research in advance right. to make a selection. So, for example, if Synetric is part of a, uh, a group, you know, that is qualified, everybody believes in them, and I can look at my at a website and see, oh, there's a, there's a good one, there's another good one, um, then that helps me because I can do my research. Sure. But, but, uh, but Larry has 90. So surely there are differences among those 90, just as there are differences among the 300. You know what we need? We need a rating, a rating <laughs> website, you know. That's right. That's Emily's good. list kind of thing. <laughs> I'm sure it'll I'm sure it'll, sure it'll come over. I'm sure it'll come over. It doesn't exist now, though. So do you do that among your contract at night? Or you just say, we, okay, we, they're all we don't. the standard. Hawaii it. Energy's uh, uh, contractor agnostic, as long as they make the, the requirements of the program. What we're interested in is uh, reliable, um, sustainable energy savings. So the, 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 the standard specifications, those systems are, are being built to last at least 15 years if they're properly See, maintained. See, what, what I want to know is when I when I make my decision, and I will one day, I will, I'll be calling you. Um, I'll give you the card. <laughs> please. Uh, I, I want to know who the big guys are. I want to know who the reliable guys are. I mean, I'm, I'm marrying the company for 30 years or whatever, mm -hmm. right? I need to know this is going to be the best product I can get because it's a long-term deal. I don't want it falling apart. I don't want the company falling out of business. I want this to be the best that I can get for my, my house that I love so dearly. And, and I, right now, I, it's word of mouth, isn't it? It's word of mouth. Which we need more than that. We need more than word of mouth. And we certainly need more than advertising because you can puff all day on advertising. That's the one I teach you in law school, Larry. Puff all day. <laughs> <laughs> So I know your secret. So I want to go back to the 300 companies. So there isn't something like a Larry uh, Hawaii Energy that looks at all the 300 plus PV um, installers to say this is the minimum standard, or is it just when Kiko comes in and says, "Oh, you need it or you don't"? There, there's not that I'm aware of. But you know, I mean, I think that some companies are are the, the having the permit be closed by the electrical inspectors is definitely you know, something that's important. Fact. What about the Hawaii Solar Energy Association? Do they have a rating system? If a company belongs, should I have greater confidence in that company? If a company doesn't belong, does that mean I shouldn't have so much confidence? No, I, you know, I think the Hawaii Solar Energy Association is more of a, a, a in some ways, a trade organization. It's it's not it's geared towards policy initiatives, and they they do some great work. But I don't think it's designed or set up to evaluate whether companies are are the quality of the services or products they're providing. I think it's an important point, and maybe is, something will happen going forward because you know from your the consumer point, perspective. right? From the consumer yep. perspective, not not only in terms of uh, you know, the technology, but in the, the quality of the installation, the quality of the, the footings on the roof, uh, how they're drilling the holes, absolutely, uh, all those things, uh, the safety of it, the long well, where to longevity. Where to go if something goes wrong? Where to go, right? Right. What kind of customer service are you getting? And what's the quality of the actual installation? Are they going to come every day till they're finished, or are they going to come on odd Tuesdays when they have time? You know, <laughs> that never happens with some electric, right? Revolution. Revolution. <laughs> I can't speak to what happens with some electric day. Revolution. Well, they all come on our show. <laughs> We had Revolution on the show a few weeks yeah, ago. We did. Yeah. Yeah, we did. <laughs> so, anyway, um, so the other thing is, uh, what what sort of legislation, okay, do you think would be appropriate? I mean, from Revolution's point of view, 
Yeah, I mean, I think from the industry's perspective as a whole, um, you know, what we need is some stability. Uh, we've had a lot of, of ups and downs, threats of the credit being taken away, the credit being changed, and then maybe it was going to be changed back again. And, and that sort of instability, I think, hurts consumers and it hurts businesses. It hurts potential investors. It's just, a, you know, all around, it doesn't really benefit anyone. And so I think what we want is a stable policy going forward. I think what we were um, close to achieving uh, last leg this past legislative session was a sort of compromise bill that that the industry broadly agreed on, although it, you know, different parts of it, like different parts of it better and, and worse, but at the end of the day, um, there was a lot of consensus, uh, you know, yeah, among the industry. Yeah, that, so why did it fail? You know, I, I, I'm not sure of the, of the exact details, but, um, you know, what it would have done is it would have stepped down the credit yeah. gradually over time. That's what we need there. So, so it, you know, it allows the industry to be sort of be weaned off, and, and, and as prices continue to come down, you, as you expect them to continue coming down, uh, then uh, the, the credit would, would, would gradually go down Instead as well. Instead of a, a sudden drop. Exactly. And, and it sets a, you know, it gives some visibility, you know, five or six years in the future. Mm -hmm. um, you know, ground forward. Yeah. Exactly. And so I think that would have been, um, you know, terrific. And I, you know, I hope the legislature will do something like that but, uh, this year. We got very close last year, and it's unfortunate that it didn't. Really hope really so, happen. too. When the credit expires, when it ultimately sunsets, however it ultimately sunsets, do you think that's going to have an effect on the market? Well, I think it depends on when the credit does ultimately sunset. You know, I think that the, the federal credit, the residential credit, I believe, is scheduled to sunset in 2016 right now. and, and the, you It's know, not far away. It's not far away. It's getting closer. And, and, you know, but that at least I think the market is is taking that into account because it's it's been set for a long time. It's not under threat year after year. You know, if the credit went away completely uh, tomorrow, I think it would have an impact. And we did mm -hmm. see an impact from the, sure. the credit being, right. you know, effectively yeah, changed year, by, yeah, by yeah. the Department of Taxation. And so we've oh, seen that sure. effect. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and if the legislature were to act to, to cut it off tomorrow, I think that would have an impact. If they sunset it five or six years down the road, I think, um, you know, I think that would give everyone time to adjust and, and, and uh, you know, provide some stability in the path forward. So now, inherent in the bill that failed was a correction of what the, what the Department of Taxation did, right? Yes. Uh, because that, that was a problem for everyone. You know, it was, yes. It was really the Department of Taxation was stepping in perhaps where it should not have gone. Uh, who's trying to be an expert in something in which it was not an expert. <laughs> well, we, I, I agree that the legislature is the, is the best body to, to make that choice. Yeah. Okay, well, given that agreement, I think we can move forward to a break. <laughs> uh, this is Think Tech. It's Hawaii, the state of clean energy. It's uh, sponsored by HECO, DBAN, and Hawaii Energy, represented by Larry Newman right, right here today, and Sharon Murawaki, my co-host, and our special guest, Zach McNish. Uh, from Revolution, I'll be clear about it. I'll say it again, Revolution. <laughs> we're gonna take a we're gonna take a break right now. I'll be right back.
We're back. We're live. We're here at Pioneer. We're here at Pioneer with Sharon Moriwaki, Larry Newman, and, and Zach McNish talking about uh, solar and, and the, co the competition in the industry. And you were burning with questions on this, Sharon. So I, how I, about those questions? Well, as we were talking about the legislation the incentives going away, I was, I was also trying to look at what is it? Is that the costs, the, whether it's labor or your technology or your materials going down, will that meet the incentives going away? And what, what are your projections and how do you look at that? Yeah, so, so, you know, I think that's a great question, and, um, and it's something we think about all the time. The, the federal incentive is, is set to expire in 2016, so that's something that's sort of in everyone's minds. The state incentive, uh, you know, there is no expiration right now, and, and uh, you know, but it's sort of under threat uh, every year. So, so I think one of the issues will be when that ultimately sunsets. But in terms of where costs are going, you know, there's there's two big components to the cost. One is the hard cost of the materials, the the uh, solar panels, the inverters, and those have have been going down, 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 down. And except that we're now at a point where, for the first time, they're beginning to in a few years they're beginning to flatten out and, and actually start to increase slightly, as a result of some of the big uh, panel manufacturers either going out of industry or or going into bankruptcy. Um, so you know, there was a lot of competition on that production end that drove a few of them out of business, and so the the market was flooded, and now it's um, you know, a little tighter. Uh, on the soft costs, really, that's the, the uh, you know, I think where there's a lot of room to bring down costs further, and that's, um, part of that is, is developing ways of installing uh, faster and, and better. Uh, part of it is in terms of streamlining permitting processes, um, streamlining financing processes, all the things that take time and money and effort for either people in our company to do or for homeowners to do or that banks charge fees for. So all of those things are, are costs to the, to the homeowner right now. And I think there's a lot of room to bring those costs down over the next couple of years while the credit's still in place before the credit expires. So how, how is on-bill financing going to affect the, the industry? Yeah, I think that's a, a terrific question. And you know, the, the short answer is I don't know. Um, it's very succinct. <laughs> But I'll, I'll go on a little more to not disappoint you. <laughs> um, you know, we, we have seen the development of, of, um, of more um, and more readily available leasing products, um, you know, which make solar more accessible. So anything that you can do to, to allow a, a homeowner to not have to pay the entire cost of the system up front is a, is a good thing because it makes solar more accessible to people who don't just have thirty or forty thousand dollars sitting in their bank account to pay for a solar system and so if they can spread that over out over time whether it's through a lease to a leasing company or through uh, you know essentially financing it through their utility bill which is what on bill financing does um, you know it's a it's a great thing in terms of Hawaii's on bill financing um, the bill that just passed last session you know I think that that uh, is, I think it's working its way through the, the PUC and, and DBIT. I think everyone's got a little piece of, of rulemaking to do to figure out what the actual details are. But uh, you know, I think it's a terrific thing for, for ratepayers and homeowners, and, and hopefully it'll move forward quickly. It's supposed to come out in January, didn't it? Mm -hmm. That's right. Nina Marita yeah. said it was going to yeah. be available. There are a number of working groups working on it presently, for sure. Yeah. Well, I hope it doesn't get tied up in uh, you know one of those uh, uh, interminable group discussions. No, we do have those. They have, a, they, have, they have a deadline, I think, before the session starts. Yeah. They yeah. like to say we've got to go. Yeah. But I, I think Zach was on point with that there are a lot of uh, options out there already. I don't think they're going to go away. Right. Beyond, if, beyond on, on bill finance. The non on bill, yeah, right. Yeah. So, um, like loan programs? You mean? Loans, like the Hawaii Energy introduced um, a solar interest buy down um, offer where you could take the rebate and instead of it buying down the cost of the system, it would go to a participating lender and you'd have a, a zero or low cost interest loan. It doesn't reach uh, bill neutrality, which is what the on-bill financing is aiming for, but um, it would allow someone to have a system that's more affordable if they don't have the, the cash to pay for it. Um, so that option is still out there. There are some folks that still use it. Even with on-bill, people may still opt for that. Um, I think um, at least at the beginning, Onbill is hoping to reach some of the harder to reach demographics that may not have those financing options available. What was it? HB 1078, as I recall. It was the Onbill financing bill. 1078. Yeah. Anyway, so I, mean, I think the remarkable thing about that is it's not what was originally contemplated when I know Blue Planet came up with it no, two, three years ago. Years, yeah. um, it's more than that. 
It got to be more than that. It got to it got to allow uh, DBED and the PUC to authorize large loans for large facilities. And all of a sudden now, I mean, it's not it's not only just PV either, um, mm -hmm. but 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 it seems appliances a, a lot more, right? Well, it's but, initially but solar, farms, thermal, and solar. efficiency, right? Uh, and, and excuse me, and uh, PV. It, yeah. it could be large facilities, and that's my point. I mean, for example, uh, I don't know if we went together, but the, there's this. This thing out in um, Kapolei, it's, it's built on a toxic waste area, oh, and it's a large peak. Hoku built it in Forest City. Uh, it, was, it was opened about a year ago. Um, it was big, and it was, it's a commercial farm. And it seems like, you know, that, that there's a place for that. Um, but it's hard to finance it. I mean, and, and if, uh, for example, uh, Revolution was going to do that. They'd have to find a way to finance it. Well, this. 1078 allows for financing arrangements for commercial projects like that. So all of a sudden, there's all kinds of new opportunities, for, especially for PV, but not only PV. What, what, I'm, what I'm really leading to is the whole notion of uh, of whether this industry in its com, you know its competitive mode is moving more or should move more into the commercial area, uh, because I, I think that that has not yet been fully opened mm -hmm. as it. No, and, and there's still, uh, you know, our company has developed a number of feed-in tariff projects with, uh, you know, Hawaiian Electric Company um, through the PUC as a feed-in tariff program, and, and there's still, you know, many of those projects that are in the queue are still sort of waiting to be or ready to be developed, and so I think there is certainly some opportunity for some really large-scale um, solar, and that's, you know, definitely has its place in our state's energy you, future. You'd be willing to do those projects, then? Sure. If we came to you and asked you, begged you, and pleaded with you, you'd probably be willing. Please. Thank you. Do you have one in mind? <laughs> Let's talk. <laughs> well, you know, the thing is that, uh, you know, in the next minute or two before we close here, it just seems to me that uh, solar is the most prominent, PV solar, but I, you know, solar water is also a very important on a residential level, I think. Uh, solar is the great promise for renewable energy. That's the way five years, that's what five years of effort has really taught us. And it seems like there is a path to that now. And it seems like, you know, there'll be shakeouts over these 300 entrants. I'm, I'm sure that uh, Revolution will be one of the survivors in the long term. You'll be here to stay forever and ever. hope so. Uh, yeah. When, when you go public, would you just give me a call? <laughs> 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 but, but, you know, uh, here we are, and, and we have to make this industry work. Because, you know, I hate to say this. I say this for everything. As PV goes, so goes <laughs> the Clean Energy Initiative. We want it to be healthy. Mm -hmm. You didn't disagree, did you? No. <laughs> okay, closing comments? Okay. Well, I think I think that, that the positive is that when we started, PV was just a floundering kind of, you know, thought. And now, I mean, the competition is so great that I, I think that, that the, the movement is still, you know, going forward. And it's a real positive thing. But we do have the competition. So I'm just really excited that, that you folks are doing so well. In fact, the, um, I don't think Zach got to talk about it, but they're going to the mainland. They're expanding. Yep. And so no, we I heard about that. Really yeah, we, uh, two shows ago. Right. Yeah. yeah. So I think that's New York, positive. wasn't it? New York, New York. upstate New York. Yeah. yeah. So I think it's moving ahead. But yep. so energy is going ahead. Clean yeah. energy. Yeah. Well, do you offer uh, uh, senior citizen discounts? <laughs> <laughs> student discounts? Military uh, discount, anything? Or, <laughs> we got to talk. We can talk. So, Larry, we'll talk what's, your, what's your thought about the show? And, and can you talk more specifically about Zach? <laughs> <laughs> Aside from being a lawyer. No. <laughs> uh, competition's great. I, I think uh, stick to the fundamentals. Get three quotes. Same in our business. We've got lots of contractors, and we'll get customers that call and say, well, which one should I go with? And we say, they're all, they're all going to serve you well. Go out and talk to at least three. Get some quotes. Do the due diligence. You have to be responsible to some degree. So whether it's solar thermal or PV, get get three quotes. I you know I, I agree with that. I think I do think competition is great. Get three quotes, but uh, sure try to do an apples to apples comparison and you know and make sure your company is going to be around to service those warranties. Thank you, Zach. Thank you, Larry. Thank you, Sharon. Great show. We'll be back tomorrow with more ThinkTech. Hello, everybody. Hello. <laughs>